This is for Tupac. Hey guys, I am going to be reacting to Both Be Unsolved, uh, busy, Biggie and Tupac special together because it was a two parter. And I hope you like the little clip that I put in the beginning. And I hope YouTube goes easy on me. Three, two, one, play. Today on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we're covering the mysterious death of Tupac, Shakur, and Biggie Small, starting with Tupac. Right now, we're on our way to Las Vegas and eventually Los Angeles to cover some of the spots where this all went down. As always, I'm Ryan, that's Brent, and we brought along our friend Deja because it felt wrong to cover Biggie and Tupac without bringing a true super fan. I'm more of a Tupac fan, but, you know, Biggie, Biggie's cool. Irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you're irrelevant. Anyways, let's get into it. Music is irrelevant. 1996, at the MGM Grand Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, Tupac Shakur attended a Mike Tyson boxing match. After the match, Tupac left with Suge Knight, who at the time was CEO of the West Coast record label, Death Row Records, the label that Tupac was I think Disney to. owns However, that now. on their way out, Tupac and his bodyguards got into a fight with Orlando Anderson Ooh. in the lobby of the MGM Casino. In the lobby? In the lobby of the MGM. Orlando Anderson was a member of the Compton-based Southside Crips gang. After the brawl, Suge Knight and Tupac left a Knight's car with Tupac's entourage following in cars behind them. While stopped at a traffic light at the intersection of Flamingo and Cobol, a white Cadillac pulled up on the passenger side of Knight's car and shot out of the window, hitting Tupac four times and grazing Knight in the head with the bullet fragment. In 2014, 18 years after the shooting, Chris Carroll, a now retired Las Vegas Police Department sergeant, came forward to say he was first at the scene. Why was he quiet for 18 years? If I was a cop, I wouldn't necessarily say in a public way that I was the first person. All right. <laughs> Own Daisha. Shut up. According to Carroll, when he opened the car door, Tupac fell the, out of the that car. That car has really thin tires, quote, or they could be flat. And states that Tupac took a breath to respond and said, quote, fuck you, or <laughs> slipping into unconsciousness, making those two pops last mm -hmm. one. Since we're like right here. I just made it hilarious. No way. What time is it right now? 11.56. Look how many cars right now at 11.56. On a Friday that's not nearly as busy as a Tyson fight. There's no way, like if I heard those gunshots, it would just be like. <laughs> You'd look where it was, right? Yeah. yeah. Tupac was taken to the University Medical Center and placed on life support in a medically induced coma. And on September 13th, 1996, six days after the shooting, Tupac died due to his injuries at the age of 25. Whoa, 25? I didn't realize he died so young. Both of them died yeah, super young. Yeah, he died young. at 25, Biggie Smalls died at 24. I think that's what was so heartbreaking about it, is that there were these two young black males just on the thought of that little and, like, they just joke from that one episode of South Park. One strange fact is that the Las Vegas police never arrested anyone in connection with the murder. They also failed to follow up with Yaki Gaddafi, a member of Tupac's entourage who was there that evening who claimed he could identify the assailant. However, Gaddafi was unfortunately murdered two months later on November 10th, 1996 before he could be interviewed. Wow. A Las Vegas homicide detective who oversaw the case claimed it got, quote, the same treatment as any other homicide here, end quote. What does that mean? Yeah, what the Nobody fuck does died. that mean? <laughs> we don't care if he was was famous we treat everyone the same <laughs> all right let's get to some of the main theories all right the first theory not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing Chuck phillips who believes that orlando anderson the crips gang and none other than biggie smalls are responsible for the murder chuck phillips and the la times investigated the murder over the course of a year and came up with the following conclusions based on anonymous sources Conclusion one, members of the Southside Crips were involved in the shooting as retaliation Is there for Biggie Smalls beating Orlando sitting Anderson. sitting behind one of the silhouettes? Conclusion two, Orlando Anderson was the shooter. Conclusion three, Biggie Smalls paid $1 million for the murder of Tupac and supplied the gun. No! How would anyone know that? Well, he Also, did... why would you supply the gun? <laughs> Because he wanted it done with his gun, reportedly. Why? That's because how that's how things go down, I guess. I don't know. Speaking of Biggie, let's go over his potential motive for wanting Tupac dead. Biggie's year-long feud with Tupac was well known and at the forefront of the East Coast-West Coast rap rivalry, including a reported verbal altercation and diss tracks. In one track titled Hit Em Up, Tupac claimed he had slept with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans. How does that one go? Is Everyone's claiming up, they're up, sleeping up. with everyone. Or is that a different one? <laughs> I'm actually curious. I think you should just never do that again. <laughs> no, no, no. I Strangely, according to Phillips, neither Biggie nor anyone connected to Biggie was questioned by the police. Wow, okay. As for Orlando Anderson, the believed shooter, he was shot to death in May 1998. Up until his death, Anderson denied responsibility for Tupac's death and was never charged. 
The second theory is from former LAPD detective Russell Poole, who believes that Suge Knight set up the murder. Despite Suge Knight also being hit in the shooting, Detective Poole believes Suge Knight had motives. Motive one, Suge Knight apparently owed Tupac a lot of money, by some accounts $3 million, a theory corroborated by the fact that Afini Shakur, Tupac's mother, sued Death Row and Knight in 1997 for mishandling funds and taking millions of dollars away from Tupac. Motive two, Tupac intended to leave Death Row Records, Suge Knight's label. Tupac had recently fired his lawyer, David Kenner, who in addition to being Suge Knight's lawyer, also wrote up Tupac's agreement with Death Row Records. And sure enough, a week after the firing, Suge Knight invited Tupac to the fateful boxing match. Here's some other things that don't look good for Suge Knight. Shortly after the brawl in the MGM lobby, Knight stopped to make a phone call while everyone else was fleeing the scene. That's Knight weird. also insisted that Tupac ride with him in his car after the boxing match. Was it on Tupac's side that they shot him in the car, or was it on Suge Knight's side? The side of the car that Tupac was on. So how'd they know that they got Tupac's side? Oh, I see what you're saying. So how would they know which side Tupac was on? Yeah. Unless somebody told him. Right. Orlando Anderson, the man who Tupac fought with at MGM, also contradicted his initial testimony. At first saying Knight was part of the MGM brawl, but then later saying that Knight was trying to break up the fight, stating, quote, I seen him pulling people off of me, end quote. Many people believe this turnaround happened because of a payoff by Knight. Detective Poole also claims the bullet wound Knight says he received that night was never verified by the hospital, the police, or any other witnesses. So okay, no that's sketchy. That exactly. Whoa! However, what? How did that get through? However, however, this contradicts the 2014 report from former Las Vegas Police Sergeant Chris Carroll, who stated that Knight's head was, quote, gushing blood, and that he had, quote, clearly been hit in the head. Carroll also mentioned that Knight showed legitimate concern and that, quote, it wasn't acting. Why would he be like, it's not acting? That sounds like something <laughs> that someone would pay you to say, like. You don't trust that Chris Carroll was a, a licensed casting director and wouldn't notice bad acting from good acting? <laughs> well, he said that later, though, so he must have heard the rumors that people thought it was Shug. That could be also why he said this, mm -hmm. quote, this is not the guy who had him killed. It's ridiculous. To me, yeah, this makes way more sense than Biggie. This guy would only benefit from Tupac dying because then he's going to be able to get more money because then obviously his music will become immortalized now. And he'll still own everything. Right. Here's my thing about it. I just, I can't see someone putting themselves in the line of fire yeah. in a murder scenario. I just don't, that True. doesn't make no. sense to me. Yeah. yeah. The third theory is from LAPD detective Greg Kading, who believes that Sean Combs, AKA P Diddy or Puff Daddy and CEO of the East Coast record label- I'm surprised he didn't put all his- Orchestrated his Tupac's death. Different names. Detective Kading got a Crips gang member named Keith Davis to confess on tape that P Diddy paid him $1 million to carry out the murder of Tupac. Was Shanghai. the LAPD corrupt at the time? That Orlando Anderson, who was Davis's nephew, was the one who pulled the trigger. And Davis also admits to being in the car when he recounts the night that Tupac was shot. Quote, Orlando rolled down the window and popped him. If they would have drove on my side, I would have popped them. End quote. Keith Davis claims the motive behind P. Diddy's hit was due to fear that Suge Knight would strike first, and that Tupac was only included in the hit because P. Diddy was pissed off about Tupac's song, Hit Him Up. Furthermore, before Tupac was killed, he was shot multiple times on November 30th, 1994 at Quad Recording Studios in New York City. Tupac repeatedly stated that he suspected people associated with P. Diddy were the perpetrators, a suspicion corroborated by a 2011 confession from Dexter Isaac, who claimed he was hired by a P. Diddy associate to rob Tupac that night. However, P. Diddy has denied involvement in the murder, stating, quote, this story is pure fiction and completely ridiculous, end quote. And for what it's worth, Keith Davis was reportedly looking at 25 years to life due to unrelated activities if he didn't reveal his secrets. If you're saying that someone paid you a million dollars, like, wouldn't you, wouldn't there be some kind of receipt to say that? You don't want a paper trail. Would Why would you establish a paper trail? Okay, all right. Overruled. Listen. <laughs> The next theory is that the Jewish Defense League. What? <laughs> <laughs> Let him finish. Let him finish. What's it? Oh, what do? What is? Oh shit! Really? <laughs> the next theory is that the Jewish Defense League, an extremist pro-Israel group, killed Tupac. 
The FBI had files of alleged death threats on Tupac from the Jewish Defense League, which has been classified as a terrorist group by the FBI. Uh, weren't Other they than, murdering Nazis? Really not much to see here. I mean, they did offer threats. They did offer they're threats. The only one, they're the only people who said, I'm gonna kill you. You know what? You have a point. And the who did Tupac piss off for that? Aliens. <laughs> Finally, I believe you. Yes, of course. Together, working at last. <laughs> some believe that Tupac is in fact still alive and faked his own death. In 2015, some news outlets reported that a man named David Myers claimed he helped Tupac fake his death and that Suge Knight, among others, helped as well. However, this story seems to have originated from a fake news site, so take it with an enormous grain of salt. Man, the whole Some goddamn salt, like... Alive and well in Cuba. I like, I want to believe that's the truth, yeah. because I think it means so much more for, like, humanity. The, yes, exactly. Yeah. Everything would be better in the world if that were true. Yes. Yeah. It seems clear to me why it's unsolved. There's a lot of holes. I think There's he's a lot of dead. And a lot of people who aren't talking. Who would have enough power to get all of these people to not say anything? Who killed Tupac? That'll do it for today. We're gonna stay the night in Vegas and we'll pick it back up tomorrow when we're gonna drive to Los Angeles and discuss the death of Biggie Smalls. So, see you then. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so I think Tupac was, is, I think he's definitely dead. And all those blamed sightings of him were actually doppelgangers. Well, let's see about his rival, Mr. Biggie Smalls. You. I know well as this South Park version of Bloody Mary. Three, two, one, play. Welcome to part two of an episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved where we discuss the deaths of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. We just discussed Tupac in Vegas and now we're hitting the road again to go to Los Again, Angeles to discuss Biggie. So Let's get into it. On March 9th, 1997, at the Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles, That's a cool Christopher building. Wallace, aka Biggie Smalls, or the Notorious B.I.G., was attending a Soul Train Awards after party. At approximately 1 a.m., Biggie Smalls left the party with Sean Combs, aka P. Diddy or Puff Daddy, and CEO okay, of the East Coast so Record there label, is Bad a Boy little Records, bit a label that know. Biggie was signed to. P. Diddy left in a car with others, and Biggie left separately with his driver and two friends. Biggie's car followed Diddy's car while heading north on Fairfax Avenue, but only Biggie's car would get stopped at the stoplight on Wilshire Boulevard. While Biggie's car was stopped at the intersection of Fairfax and Wilshire, a black Chevy Impala pulled up and fired a gun at Biggie from the driver's side window, hitting Biggie four times. Of the four people in the car, Biggie was the only one who was hit. We're about to drive through the intersection where he got shot. They came out of this parking structure right here, and then they got stopped right here at this light. This is really weird. This is weird. Yeah, like, could you imagine looking to your right? The first thing you see is a gun. That's crazy. Yeah. Makes me feel weird. I'm like, I don't want to sit in this seat anymore. <laughs> According to multiple witnesses, the driver was a black male in a blue suit with a bow tie. P. Diddy ran out of his car and across Wilshire Boulevard to Biggie's car, and they drove to Cedar sinai Medical Center where Biggie was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. Before we get into suspects, I'd like to point out that former LAPD Lieutenant Sergio Robleto commented on how strangely uninvolved the LAPD robbery homicide division was in the case. Quote, Are you guys just being first, lazy? But they were gone by the next morning and didn't come back to the case until an entire month had passed. In 30 years, I had never seen that. A murder case involving a major celebrity that wasn't taken over by robbery homicide right out of the gate. End quote. That does look strange. Okay, I'm starting to think it might have been the LAPD and LVPD together. Yeah. LAPD and uh, Las Vegas. So if this is a cover-up, this person's reach is crazy. That being said, this case is different from Tupac's in that I could only find one theory that seems to have legitimate evidence. However, it is a very solid theory. The theory from former LAPD detective Russell Poole is that Suge Knight, former CEO of the West Coast record label Death Row Records, along with corrupt LAPD cops, killed Biggie Smalls. Suge Knight's possible motive was to avenge the death of Death Row Records star artist Tupac, who some suspect was murdered by Biggie. Suge Knight can't catch a break, man. <laughs> Everyone is after this dude. If the hat fits, though. Didn't he, like, run over Prior someone and kill him? Detective Pool to the discovery that members of the LAPD were on the payroll of Death Row Records serving as security guards. Wow. One of the members of the LAPD who was on the payroll was an officer named... I David honestly Mac. would not be surprised. The connection to Mac is critical, because not only was Mac there the night of the party, but Mac also owned a black Impala like the one seen at the scene of the crime. 
crime. David Mack was also affiliated with an alleged hitman named Amir Muhammad, who knew Mack in college. Amir Muhammad happens to eerily match the description of the Kendall's shooter, getting Murphy. leading Detective Poole to believe that Suge Knight hired Muhammad for the hit on Biggie. When Detective Poole presented his case to his superiors, he said he was told, quote, we're not going that way, end quote. Crazy. I don't want to say corruption. He didn't say, no, you're wrong. He didn't say, that's stupid. He said, no, don't look that way. <laughs> that's always the sentiment of an innocent man. <laughs> Additionally, multiple people claimed Suge Knight ordered the hit on Biggie. One of these people was a prison informant named Mario Hammonds, who after Biggie's death claimed Suge Knight said, quote, my people handled the business. They took care of him. We just miss Puffy, end quote. Question. Was Suge Knight at this party? Yeah, he must have been. There was a Soul Train Award. <laughs> Wait, what? Is that not a music award? <laughs> Suge Knight had to be there. It was a Soul Train Award. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I meant that, at all. It, it kind of seems like that's what it, you meant. Of course, <laughs> this person who's in the music world would have to be there. <laughs> it was just, I'm I just, just <laughs> confused. In 2002, Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace, filed a wrongful death lawsuit that prompted further investigation. Investigators spoke to witness Eugene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard who described a man that was lurking outside near Diddy after the party. Deal said the man walked north, toward where the Black Impala would eventually appear from. When shown a lineup of photographs, Deal picked out the man he saw. The man was Amir Muhammad. That's pretty strong evidence, to be able to pick someone out of a lineup like- That you've never seen yeah. before. This investigation also uncovered many missteps of lead investigator Steve Katz including his failure to forensically test David Mack's black Impala. Yeah, they can't test every single person's black Impala, though. Yeah, but they could test the black Impala owned by a man who's on the payroll of Death Row Records, a suspect. Well, but wait, he was what? also a the guy was also a police Impala, officer. The, the, the car owner was the a the night police officer. This person had a that guy was probably crook, too. The one seen at the scene of the crime. You should ask that person some questions. All right. He just but said that you were hella corrupt. Detective Katz did not interview Amir Muhammad. Wow. Katz also reportedly forgot to turn in over 200 pages of documents hidden in his drawers at work that included key testimony describing in detail the involvement of another LAPD officer in the murder of Biggie Small. Bruh, As seriously? A result of the hidden evidence, the judge declared a mistrial in the wrongful death lawsuit. That's pesky paperwork is at home, so <laughs> we can't do anything about it. Mistrial! Biggie's family refiled their wrongful death lawsuit in 2007, continuing to accuse the LAPD of a conspiracy, but this lawsuit was dismissed. And it gets worse. In 2011, the case was reopened when the FBI's file on Biggie was released and revealed Biggie was shot by Gecko 9mm armor-piercing ammunition. What? An ammunition so rare that there are only two distributors of it in the United States. What? And the, the same hell? type of ammunition was found in none other than David Mack's home. What? The, because the cop <laughs> super rare ammunition found only yeah. two places in the U.S.? Yeah. Found in Biggie, found at this guy's house? Irrelevant. He was like, the murderer didn't write his initials on the bullets, so <laughs> there's no was way- Was that a purpose to kill her bean? In 2015, Detective Russell Poole died from a heart attack. And, unquote. <laughs> no, he died from a heart attack. And unfortunately, no arrests in connection with the Biggie Smalls case were ever made. However, oh, it is beautiful. worth mentioning that in 2015, Suge Knight ran yeah. two men with his car. One of the men died, and Knight is currently in jail awaiting trial. I think he's You're that in jail. Of of killing people. I think he's in prison you now. Just go run over two guys in your car. True. But then we don't know if he intentionally meant to go run over those guys. And right? I know a lot of brilliant people that are shitty drivers. <laughs> are you talking about me? <laughs> well, me. Or are you talking about yourself? <laughs> the person who didn't fill the gas up in his car. As always, there are wild okay, I'm gonna watch this little end credit no thingy. To them. Some people believe the FBI killed Biggie and Tupac to put an end to the violent East Coast versus West Coast rap rivalry. And some people even insist that Biggie is still alive. Although this no, isn't as popular as No, he's the new Bloody Mary. You know what I like about that theory is that they're all still alive and they're all friends. You know, both with like Biggie and Tupac, their their albums had to deal a lot with death. And so like, I know that a lot of people felt like that played into why they thought he was still alive. Actually, so there's one theory that I thought that you'd maybe talk about. Someone had told me that they thought that Puffy actually killed Biggie. I did hear that Puffy as CEO of Bad Boy would actually make a little bit more money posthumously off 
Biggie Smalls records. I feel like I've also heard rumors that Biggie was thinking about leaving Bad Boy. Oh, well then that's different. It's weird that P. Diddy was connected to both of these. I don't know, with Tupac's, I feel like it was still a little bit uncertain. With Biggie, this feels like should definitely, there's more of a clear link to how he had his hands in things. Sigma, it's really crafty. I'ma say that. Please don't kill me, Mr. Knight. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like one of those things where I'm like, I'm leaning towards that, but I don't want to actually say that. Because <laughs> I might not actually be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> and I might not actually be breathing. Yeah, but if you did, then people would, well, hopefully would consider him more, right? You gotta take a stand so that people can find the truth. But in the end, the mystery of the Biggie Smalls murder, despite having a good deal of evidence, remains officially unsolved. So I'm gonna read it my theory after this little scene. Miles to the gas station. How did we run out of gas? <laughs> Two miles. Get out of my way, truck. One mile. Any second now, we're gonna stop moving. The shell's there. I'm gonna coach through the stop sign. <laughs> oh no! Come on! You got the no, you got the So yeah, I think it was actually corrupt police officers, like maybe it wasn't the record labels themselves, but just like maybe a bunch of corrupt LA LAPD guys knew that knew that Tupac would be going to Las Vegas and they were like sick and tired of like, I don't know, gangs or something or just straight up racism and shit. And they're like, hey, can you guys like murder Tupac for us? And the LVBD might have been like, sure, we got a few corrupt guys who are willing to do it. You guys wanted to hear Biggie Smalls? And the LAPD may have been like, yeah, we can do that on our own turf. We know we, we got a guy with a cool, we, we got a guy, we got a guy. So that's what I think happened. See you guys in the next one.